So the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro have been with us here in the office for a little bit now, and after actually using both of them for nearly a month at this point, I not surprisingly have some thoughts about these phones. Really though, I wanted to share with all of you why it is I've decided to go with the Pixel 6 versus the larger Pixel 6 Pro. This isn't gonna be your run of the mill style review, but I think and I hope that you'll learn a lot about what it feels like to use these phones on a daily basis as I go about explaining my final decision. So let's get into it. Now, we did make a previous video outlining why I was so torn on this whole Pixel 6 versus 6 Pro decision, and all of those feelings were legit. I bounced back and forth for some time between both of these devices before eventually landing on the Pixel 6. And now that I've actually purchased my own device, I feel confident that the 6 is the better overall value and fit for most people. A better overall phone? Maybe not, but there's so much upside to the Pixel 6 that I know for certain it's the right one for me. I also wanna get one other thing out of the way right off the bat. I am not a phone reviewer. I used to swap phones like I swap shoes, always on to the next big thing, the next breakthrough, the next gimmick. It didn't matter if it was a Samsung, Motorola, LG, or Nexus phone from Google. I was there for it. But phones have become utilities and quite honestly, a little boring. They're all just so good that there's little they can do to surprise us these days. And because of that, I've stopped moving through phones so rapidly. And honestly, I just upgrade my phone once a year like a normal person. I've been rocking the OnePlus 8T since last fall and I came to it from the 2019 Pixel 4 XL. I mean, simply put, I don't get my hands on a lot of phones these days. So that's why we didn't think a standard review even made sense for us. Like I don't have a working knowledge of what the latest smartphones feel like to use on a daily basis, Android or iOS. So to tell you how much better or worse the Pixel 6 is versus all those other phones out there would just be inauthentic for us and honestly probably not useful for you at all. What I have used though is every single Pixel that's ever been made. So that's something I can actually talk to you about. As a Pixel user, since the very first one hit the market, I've honestly hated not being a Pixel guy for the better part of a year at this point. Every single time I've picked up my wife's Pixel 4 XL or any of the mid-range Pixels that we kind of have littered around the office, I would just like yearn to get back to this version of Android. I just wanted to go back to a Pixel. Regardless of that yearning though, I'd become too used to all like the niceties that modern smartphones offer, like larger and higher refresh screens and faster processors. I couldn't bring myself to purchase something like the tiny little Pixel 5 or even the larger 5a that is stuck only at 60 hertz. Yeah, they have the Pixel software that I want, but what I really wanted was that software and nicer hardware. And Google has delivered that with the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. With Qualcomm out of the picture now, Google can just go all in and make the best phones it's capable of, at this point at least, and keep their prices in check. The Pixel 6 starts at $599 and the 6 Pro at $899. And for what they're bringing to the table, those are really low prices when you compare it to the competition. And you've probably heard these specs before in some other review, but they're worth repeating. Both phones come with Google's new custom Tensor SoC, the same 50 megapixel main camera and 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. But things really do diverge from there. The Pro gets an additional 50 megapixel 4X telephoto camera option and an upgrade Upgraded selfie camera that increases your megapixel count from 8 up to 12 over the regular Pixel 6. When we start talking about internals, the Pixel 6 has 8 gigs of RAM and either 128 or 256 gigs of storage. The Pixel 6 Pro gets upgraded to 12 gigs of RAM and 128, 256, or 512 gigs of storage. Further diverging the two, the Pixel 6 has a 90 hertz full HD screen at 6.4 inches, with the Pro getting a 6.7 inch quad HD screen at 120 hertz. Externally, the Pixel 6 keeps the matte finish black rails from pixels of old and has a fully flat screen, while the Pixel 6 Pro comes with a slightly curved screen and polished metal all around the edges. I think that just about covers it for all those specs. Like I said earlier, I don't really want to get bogged down in the spec department with this video. I really want to get to the fact that the Pixel 6 has just won me over and explain why that is. So 
let's do that. First up, and maybe only important for a little while longer, is the fact that the Pixel 6 is just more widely available. The Pro sold out basically everywhere right away, and though we do have one here for review, I was ready personally to take advantage of some of the awesome trade-in deals that are available at places like T-Mobile, and that meant I had to make a decision. I'd argue that this was the least important factor for my ultimate choice, but it did play into it for sure, and I'd wager it's playing into it for some of you as well. Hey, I've been enjoying my Pixel 6 for weeks already. My wife, still waiting on her Pro to ship. Next up is simply the feel of this phone. The Pixel 6 feels like a Google phone, and the Pro doesn't. Look, I know I said in that first video that I could just get used to it, the Samsung-like feel of the Pro, and honestly, I kind of did, but I also continue to look at the Pixel 6 laying on the desk with this, like, envy almost. I like the black matte finished rails and the overall unassuming look of the Pixel 6. It doesn't detract or take away from the Pro's more flashy exterior, but for me, the aesthetics of the Pixel 6 won me over, and honestly, I feel like they strike the best balance of quality and aesthetic together. Then we have to talk about that flat screen. Is the display on the Pro better? Yes, everything about it's better, but I hate curved displays, and in real-world use, they just don't serve any purpose. They make the phone more difficult to use, and they're way more prone to damage. Look, I'll take a really good flat screen over an excellent curved display every single time. And while we're talking about displays, we have to mention the size. 6.7 inches is pushing the barrier for me on what is too large for a smartphone. And while I did get used to it on the Pixel 6 Pro, I still felt like it was too much most of the time. Picking up the Pixel 6 feels right, and though it, it's still a large phone by most people's measure, it's right around that 6.5 inch mark that I think OnePlus has really nailed over the last few years with their phones. It's large enough for content consumption, yet still small enough not to feel unwieldy. Finally, there's just the price and overall value proposition that we have to talk about with the Pixel 6. I think the Pro is priced fairly for all the upgrades you get, but the truth is, I don't need most of them. 90 hertz on the screen is fine. The screen is great, it's not the best, but it's great. Eight gigs of RAM is plenty. I generally only buy 128 gig phones anyway, so that's not an issue either. And the camera setup on the Pixel 6 honestly has been outstanding. Seriously, there's not been one time that I've missed the telephoto lens or considered the quality of the selfie camera on the Pixel 6. It's honestly just been awesome. To put it plainly, I think Google absolutely nailed the value proposition on this phone. I get the Google experience that I want and have yearned for. I get solid hardware and the trade-offs are so minimal that I've not even thought about it since putting down the Pro. The Pixel 6 is now in my pocket for a whole bunch of reasons, but at the end of the day, it's because I love Google's version of the Android experience, and I want it on hardware that doesn't feel like some sort of compromise. The Pixel 6 absolutely delivers on that, and at $599, I regularly find myself baffled at the fact that Google found a way to put this phone together for this kind of price. It's been an absolute joy to get back to a Pixel and to do so, with a phone that makes me feel like I'm getting way more out of it than the price tag would indicate. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there and hit that subscribe button, and make sure to ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.